Friday, December 3rd, 2020. So Black, so, yeah, Black Friday just, sales have, you were just saying like Black Friday sales. Yeah, so they said that, that, that the record for sales on a Black Friday has just occurred this year. And it's interesting because at the same time, there hasn't been a record turnout. So are they counting online sales as part of the Black Friday deal? You know, at the same time, you know, Thanksgiving usually was open. This year, a lot of the major department stores did not open on Thanksgiving. So I don't know if everything that I, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know where the numbers come from. Everything that I saw is it was record breaking Black Friday sales, but it was all online. You know, so like, so I think they were saying, but that's interesting to think about. So there was a record breaking amount of sales that took place on Thanksgiving or Black Friday. And typically each year it's, that's calculated from in-person sales and online sales. But this year we know that uh, most businesses that are in person are either shut down uh, or like they're not getting a lot of traffic. So they did the same amount of volume in in dollars but all online it's kind of disgusting because it's like it's like the all that well, market share just went to like jeff bezos and and walmart and the mom and pop stores and the small business owners are over here begging for money while um you know i mean it makes sense to me dude i mean i think i think like right now it's it's all about the shift it's all about. I didn't. I didn't hear much about Cyber Monday though. Did you hear anything about Cyber Monday? No. To to me, Cyber Monday didn't even show up. I didn't notice anything about a Cyber Monday. What I did notice though, were that the sales for Black Friday was like spread out for like a week before, or a couple days before, and then a couple days after. So everything was done very differently, which I don't under. You know, it's hard to really understand these numbers that they come up with how are they gauging these numbers and you know are they doing it on purpose to keep the markets up that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that you know they're coming up with these criterias right because you could you know people say oh the numbers don't lie but you could always manipulate data mm -hmm. to whatever it is that you want you can manipulate data that's one of the biggest things that governments do they manipulate data scientists do that a lot too they manipulate data to benefit their research. Um, so I don't know, man. I, all I know is that um, there's a, there's a nine hundred billion dollar stimulus bill that's that's like waiting to get passed right now. They're saying they're not even going to give money out. There's a proposal that they would only give money out if you take the vaccine. From this is from one representative. He he. He said this shit, and I don't know, for some reason, they amplified it online. Um, I don't remember where this uh, representative was from, but he's from, you know, the House. And then you have also, they're, they're saying that, okay, Nancy Pelosi, which she has been holding off the past six months on passing anything because she didn't want it to happen under Trump. Now that Biden is president, she says that she's willing to sign before a smaller bill, which is interesting mm -hmm. because they were saying before that they are going to sign a big bill. Mm -hmm. But now since, hey, Biden won, they could settle for a small bill. And it's like, see how it happens? Now the person gets into office and they start to change. Biden's saying that he's going to have to put, take, he has to raise taxes, unfortunately, he says, for everybody. Well, I saw an article from The Hill that was written yesterday uh, covering John Kerry's latest uh, comments this week saying that like the Biden administration is fully on board with the Great Reset and he thinks that it's going to happen faster than people think. And he said that in his own words on The Hill, I couldn't even believe it. It's like not even trying to hide it anymore. Uh, but he said that COVID was a short term justification for them. And climate change is a long-term justification for them to accept the Great Reset and to fully go straight into it. So, I mean, this whole dark winter that we talked about, them pulling the rug out of the economy. The economy right now, to me, looks like a controlled collapse. It's like how, 
I don't understand sometimes when like I talk to people, it's almost like they they're like it's got to be like a psyop, dude. They got to be brainwashed because it's like I try to explain to them like they're the ones that are talking about how like they want their businesses shut down, they're afraid of the virus, all this stuff, and I'm like, "But do you understand that there's no economy when people don't work? Like do you do you not understand that there's there's no society? Society itself doesn't function and operate when no one goes to work and and like it's almost they're out of these same people are out of work and they don't see that like this this cycle that they're in is like oh they see it and whatever they're doing everything they're doing is calculated look i don't care what people say when people say that oh the government these politicians are stupid politicians are not stupid Actually, I think politicians are some of the smartest people out there. To become some, you know, to be somebody in Congress for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, and keep winning, you have to be very fucking smart. Can't be some idiot, all right? These motherfuckers know what the hell they're doing. They know how they work in teams, and these teams, these these panels... They know what they're constructing. They know how to work with these lobbyists. They understand the bills that they pass. These guys are smart. They understand how the economy works. You know, when Bernie Sanders says whatever the hell he says, he knows that it doesn't work that way. But he knows that what he says helps to garner constituents. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he gets more voters. He gets people on his side. Same thing with Biden. All these people, Pelosi, they know, you know, people on the right, they all freaking know. They know what's going on right now. They understand that they, if they shut the economy down, that means that the economy comes down. Mm -hmm. it goes, you know, they understand also, they understand that also like the vaccine is not going to do anything. Vaccine is just like the flu shot. Not, I'm not saying they're equally as in chemically and all of that. I'm just saying that the vaccine is not going to cure mm -hmm. and uh, and and you know um, like like the polio disease. It's not going to eradicate it, right? Because even they're saying you know the science is not going to get eradicated. So that being said, they all understand that this is all a ploy either to to get to make more profits for the pharmaceutical industry, shut down the economy and destroy businesses that are small and not huge corporate types so that the larger ones like Amazon and the like can become larger players. They're already large. But they'll become more of the ones that are set in stone for this new great reset, right? Because if we have a great reset and if you have an economy that is green, how they call it green, which is bullshit because there's no such thing as green. You know, if, you, if you're talking about electric cars, great. If electric cars were high, you know, let's say cars were not gas. I get it. If cars were not gas, then yeah, there'll be some shit with the environment that would actually get better. But I could only see that happening if cars were actually solar powered and they could work correctly or if they were hydrogen or, you know, hydro with water, something like that. I could see it working. But when you're talking about batteries and you're talking about cobalt and all of these other things that you need. You know what you're telling me? You're telling me that we're going to have new wars because cobalt doesn't come from, you know, the United States doesn't have these huge reserves of coal, of cobalt, all right? Cobalt comes from Latin America, Bolivia, Chile, you know, places in Africa, places that, you know, will be fought over. You have, you know, countries like China that they 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 produce everything. They're going to fight over that. 
The United States is going to want all of it. Mm. There's going to be war. So when you're telling me a great, you know, a great reset, what I see is a bunch of shit that's going to happen. You know, and that's that's not only that. We got a space situation where we got, you know, the likes of Elon Musk all trying to explore. And on top of that, they're trying to launch weaponry up there. There's a bunch of things going on. And the only way to get all of that working for the United States correctly is by shutting down this analog type of society we have. So that means that we won't have people working. There'll be a small workforce in the workforce or the ones that will know, look, there's going to be a couple of different people working. Mm-hmm. The ones that know how to manage the, the systems, let's say that, you know, like, uh, automated systems, right? You got automation, you got, you know, all the tech shit. You got, these people work from home. And then you'll be, you'll have the ones that are hands on there watching these machinery and tech, technologically advanced computer systems working and they'll be doing that in the meantime you have doctors you'll have lawyers you have you know doc you know physician you know i said doctors but you have those types engineers construction workers those will continue until robots could little by little replace some of them the rest you got the lower employees the ones that work in the stores and retail those will be gone You have other administrators. Those will be gone. Office workers, gone. Some will work from home. Others will be unemployed. You'll have a large population of people. Teachers. Teachers will get cut. Think about it. Now you don't need 30 students in a classroom. You could have 100 students you could teach with one teacher if it's all online. That could happen. Yeah. There's a lot. And the the only way they won't be pushed back is if there's a collapsed economy, the government's hurting for money, and that's how it's forced in. You need to destroy the economy to have an excuse to impose new types of systems, which is why we need a collapse of the economy, which is why we need all of this shit happening right now. That's why there's a great reset. The great Any reset happens when some shit goes down, when something isn't working. It's like video games. If you and I are playing a video game and the thing freezes, we can't do shit about it. We have to turn it off and restart it all over again. You have to reset it mm-hmm. to start it. That's what the system is. We have a system just like that. Well, I mean, it's what we've been talking about for a long time. So, like, I, I find myself now getting to the point sometimes where it's like I'm amazed, but I'm not amazed. Because it's like it's just it's playing out the exact way that like we've been talking about. Uh, but so with right now with with what I'm what I try to what I'm trying to figure out is so you have you've got uh, you've got the the WTO and our boy Cloud there in in the WEF the World Economic Forum calling really being the head of this whole thing right and and then you you have and I I kind of view them as you know the same the same groups and influencers as like the same ones that rule the American empire. Right. But well, these are, these are the ones that are pushing the buttons. They're the ones that are, you know, they're pushing the buttons, but they're being told to push the buttons. Where, where does now, again, where does China come into all of this? Because I know there was that famous general that came out after September 11th, who had said in the Pentagon, like when he was told about the five countries that we were going to be going to war with over the next five to 10 years or so. And China was one of them on that list. And, um, you know, we were, I was even looking at the Trump administration and the Trump administration put sanctions on Iran. So theoretically speaking, like Donald Trump didn't really put his boots in ground on war, but he did commit a fiscal war against Iran. That pretty much takes Iran out. Why is it that China's on that list? Is it because they are the outliers? Because that are, that's the which I don't know which list you're talking about. Because I know there's a list, and there's a general, an American general mm-hmm. that actually went through a list of countries this we will got. invade. Yeah, I don't remember him saying China though. Okay, I just think China is brought up because many of the allies to those countries is China. Mm. Right, so that's how I think that probably came up. Right, but. You know, they said Syria, 
They said Lebanon. They said Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen. They said oh, many of these countries, and we went through almost all of them. Mm-hmm. Syria, and you know what? I I can't I can't tell you guys what to invest in because I'm not really a subject matter expert. But my my gut tells me to you know put money into Lockheed Martin and all that because I do with Biden coming into office. I think he will engage a war with Syria. I think they they will start doing that again. It got put off because of Trump. Mm-hmm. They didn't want any more war. That's why they didn't start anything. That's why they started to pull out. But once Biden came into the picture, General Mattis came back and a couple other, you know, warmongers came back saying, hey, you can't pull these troops out. Hey, and they're starting to do the same thing. And I think we will. And if we if that happens, then you will pull in China and Russia. Mm -hmm. But now with what you're saying, with what I think you're saying is how. How does China play into this, right? Mm -hmm. Because China's part of the WHO and China's part of the WTO. And then we also got the World Economic Forum. And then we got players from all over in there. So how can you dictate policy uniformly and at the same time, you know, geopolitics in the way of war, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because aren't these the same people that would have in the early 1800s doped up the Chinese with all the opium wars and stuff. And weren't we trying to suppress that they're the same people that were trying to suppress China as, as a country, as an economy, all that propaganda that spread throughout the Western world in the 1800s into the 1900s. And like, I I've heard in, I, I like, so when I look at that, I say is, is China the outlier for the global elites on, on where this kind of, one world government's coming into is it going to come to a point where it's like it's 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 the chinese empire that's rising to power against this existing you know uh western influenced banking elitist kind of class um and are they ultimately going to try to take over china and china is just going to say no we're not going to do that because this is how we're going to operate and you're going to operate within our system or else you know there's going to be issues kind of thing like because so you get what you kind of get what I'm saying? Like, is China I, you know, I, I see no? what you're saying. Like, and, and I in in my opinion, the people, the well, the same institutions, mm-hmm. you know, either through family ties and old institutions back in the 1800s that did fight against China and the opium wars and all of that. See, in that time period, China couldn't lead the world mm-hmm. because they were totally different compared to the rest the the economy the global economy was was ruled by nation states right you had the you know the uk was um the british empire it was all empires back then Mm -hmm. you had the spanish empire you had the the dutch and you know the they were all empires that broke up the ones now the institutions that are still around in my opinion i look at what happened in 1971 when Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger went to China and and told China, yes, you know, come you could come into our system and there's these rules and regulations they need to follow for them to be in it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it as there was a reason for that. T- think about this. Why did a communist country like China? Mm-hmm. How how was it that they were able to come back into the system? But a uh, uh, but a uh, a nation or an empire like the Soviet Union was not. Mm-hmm. The Soviet Union and China were two superpowers that were communist, bleeding red. United States in 1971 was still at war in Vietnam, mm-hmm. fighting against the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese, mm-hmm. and they were being supplied by the Russians and by the Chinese. Why would the United States go to China with Harry Kissinger and Richard Nixon to create this new economic system for China? There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that, and we probably don't know it 100%, mm-hmm. but we could guess it because from that time till now, we could see what happened. What happened was that China became the industrial factory for the world, mm-hmm. the cheapest labor. And they would get all the benefits of being part of a world, one world nation. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. China got that. And they got that and they became something. And what happened, what was a huge benefit, it's like, hey, we hey, um, China, we won't go to we won't go to, you know, Cold War with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we won't do this whole Cold War shenanigan yep. with you. And China was really suffering, man. They could have collapsed. Mm-hmm. They had a they would have had times that you know, the whole fucking Great Leap Forward, whatever that they had, that thing was a failure. That's why they had famine and all mm-hmm. that. They knew that they needed to be a little bit capitalistic. Right. It, China knew that. So China had this friendship with the United States. The United States had them to be our cheap labor and pollute as much as they want so that they could do, you know, all this stuff. And China would not get the heavy hand of the West. And then they could operate the way they want. They could be oppressive if they needed to or not. They could become communist and continue becoming communist without the United States, you know, having this conflict that the United States had with the Soviet Union. Because, number one, the, so- the United States would have collapsed as well. Mm-hmm. The United States can't fight two Cold Wars at once. Right, right, right. You could, Yeah, you could outspend Soviet Union, but can you also outspend China? Right. You know, so it's like, hey, this is a chess game. You know, you know, there's concessions here. And those concessions worked, and they were brought into the, you know, the WTO and all of that shit. Now, the Soviet Union collapsed, which was great for the United States, because now Russia wasn't an issue, and now the United States could bring in this new world, right? This new world order. That's what they called it. Mm-hmm. It's called the new world order. Yep. When the Soviet Union collapsed, it was called the new world order. George W. George H. W. said it. Henry Kissinger said it. All of them were saying we are we brought we're bringing in the new world order, and that's what they brought in after 1990. Mm. Now with that, now come, came in the corporatism, corporate right industry started to come in and exhort you know exert their influence all over the world. China allowed all these corporations to come in. United States didn't have any embargo against mm. China, but they still have it against Cuba. How does that make sense? Do you think so? The Chinese don't know how to. You think that they knew the whole time they needed to partner up? I mean, because we went back in the hi- history of China, and I know that in the '60s and '70s they had attempted to reach out to the U.S. government, and they and they were ignored. And then in the '70s, they knew they had open doors, but they were smart planners, knew they could pay off the Westerners, do whatever they got to do to build up in china and and then now that they're at that kind of turning point where they can be self-sustainable and they have the influence like are they positioned now to be good and i'm only bringing this up because i was watching david ike again uh the other night and like he's convinced that china is the end goal of these these people is that like for whatever reason you know china's the look these people they keep looking at china like if they're like this monolith right China is a fucking tool being used by these elites mm-hmm. to push forward their agenda of creating a one world. A one world system. They don't want multinational countries. They want one country. Mm-hmm. When they say they don't want they want open borders, they don't want they, they want just look at it as having one border. When you have open borders, that means you have no government. That means that everything is is free. There is, you know, I cross into Mexico and it doesn't matter because Mexico has no government. They don't rule over anything. That's not what they want. Mm. They want one that they could control. Mm. United States can't take us there anymore. United States is deaded up to their ass. And we're just not in that growth anymore. We, we've, we're tapped out. Mm-hmm. China is set to take that torch to take us there. Mm. They have a system which the elites love. They love that system. Yes, they don't like the system when it comes against them. Mm-hmm. If you're telling me that, you know, if if China is to impose their rules and regulations to those people, they wouldn't like it. Mm-hmm. But th- those rules and regulations are not going to be imposed on them. What those rules and regulations will be, it will be passed on upon them. China's the only way to get there. No other country, look, like Russia, Russia ain't nothing, mm-hmm. right? United States, the United States is the only nation, 
that has the power to stop it. But that power is is weaning. People think that China is like some system that they're going to become the superpower and take control of everything and that we will have to bow down to China and all of this shit. It's not the way it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Because that means that, number one, China can't take over the whole world. No country can. Mm-hmm. The United States can. They can't even take over Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't even take over Iraq. Yep. You can't yep. take over the whole world. Right. You can influence it as much as you can mm-hmm. up into a limit. What happens is once the United States fall in, falls in line, right? Like we have John Kerry saying that the Great Reset will happen. It's because the likes of Joe, of Joe Biden is, is going to drive the car now. He's going to drive the car to where the globalists and the... Uh, the forum, right? The economic forum. Mm. All of these people want it to go, which is park it into, you know, the Amtrak train or the bullet train that is the train of China, and China's gonna bullet bullet train it all the way to where we where they want it to be. That great leap forward. Mm. There's no difference in the Great Reset right. if you think about it. It's the same shit. That's all they're doing, bro. They're they're using China. And China knows it. And China knows what China is benefiting off of this is being allowed to do it with hardly any effort. Mm -hmm. The only constraints that they have are people like, you know, like Trump and the government the way it is and nationalism. When you when you have countries that are that are superpowers or great economic powers that have strong nationalism then that becomes a speed bump to get into that but china is like hey well we want our people to live fine we understand the future we've been given the benefit of being able to lead this future we're taking it they don't have to shoot one bullet because it's been given it to them on the plate mm-hmm. on a silver platter right so that's what's going to happen. Right. And it, I'm just, I don't care what anybody tells me. Right. I'm very sure that's exactly what's going to happen because I know history. I've studied Chinese history. I fucking – I know it. It's just right there. And it seems like where we're going right now with technology and the the implantables and stuff, I mean that might be what carries us into you know, what, we've, what we've been talking about a lot with you know, complete symbiosis with human, human, the human brain and computers and – yeah, you can't have that with the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> no. You're right? Yeah. Can in or the Constitution of the of, of Parliament, uh, you know, Great Britain and Canada and all of these nations that adopted a system similar to the United States when it comes to freedom, they need to abolish that somehow. The only way you will is well, you know, once the United States comes down from the podium, Things change. Mm-hmm. Now, there will be a shakeup when that happens. Either civil wars will break out throughout the world. Um, many things. Will, but China will be there to pick up the pieces. Mm. We could bring China into a war. But let me tell you what. I don't think we'll win it. Because you know what? To fight a war, either we have to go over there or they have to come over here. Mm. And China is not coming to American soil right. to fight. Unless it's that we attack them like outright, it is our fault. Then that's a different situation, and I think that would that would be. I don't think that would happen. Yeah, I think we're we're right now we're positioned where we're pretty much like hugging around them right now through the Pacific Ocean and then the Southeast Asia Pacific region, and then they talk about the the Eastern European front, like the largest buildup uh, since World War II. Right now, it's so odd, man, because it's like. It seems like they're just doing their thing in their part of the world. Like they're reclaiming those islands and stuff because they have, they say they have right to the South China Sea for history. And I, you know, it's, yeah, it seems very unlikely that they would come over here. That's why I think like, I try to think about how this plays out. You know, I try to think about how this plays out. I try to remember like the Roy Sabag episode I talk about a lot with like he's a natural philosopher talking about negative interest rates indicating the markets indicating a decline in population because there's a decline in money and credit. And then like, 
you know, and then, and, um, and, uh, you know, with everything else going on right now, you know, I like, you think about that and you're like, well, it's either war or people, maybe they just stop having kids and which we know there's people in the U S like people haven't been having as much kids. So maybe that adds to it. Or maybe it's just part of this vaccine. It's, it's a part of this whole health pandemic that's going on right now. How does it play out over the next five years going to the end of the fourth turning? Um, you know, and, 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 and there's really like absolutely no way that you can prepare for it other than, other than having some alternative assets and moving away. Like, you know, I just, how do you think that plays out with China though? That's what this is like. I, I, I'm talking about it a lot because like, number one, it's like in the United States, we get so much propaganda here that people are like forced to think about China and Russia as like the enemy when in reality, you know, the U S is playing the same field as they are. Um, and number two, like, there's so much influence right now in that part of the world and especially with the trade routes and especially with the oil, like we talked, we covered that part of the world. Um, I can't see it not getting to a point where it becomes some kind of hot war unless, yeah, it, unless be, it is this cool. move into the great reset. And then maybe it is just chains are free. We're going to use the militaries in, uh, like in comparison and, you know, and, if there if there's no objections to what's happening with this whole great reset and it happens the way that they want it to happen, there will not be a need for a war. Mm-hmm. I doubt it's going to be that easy. You know, number one, in our own land, nobody expected a person like Trump to come out. Mm-hmm. And other countries around the world, many people were not expected to come about. Other con- you know, for this to work. All these the the greatest economies of the world need to be all in line, meaning that the you know countries like Germany, England, France, um, United States, Japan, South Korea, and and some others have to have a a political system, have to have political leaders that are in that agenda with no strong pushback. There's a problem there in Australia and New Zealand and Canada. There's a problem there, though. Some of these countries are having issues. Angela Merkel the other day had an issue because of the the whole COVID regulations and lockdowns that um, she's losing... She's losing influence and power in Germany and things like that might hold things back. Trump saying he might come back in 2024. Things like that could put a pause to a great reset and push towards a world war. Mm -hmm. If a person like Trump comes in, comes back into power in America and in some other countries you have these battles, right? Like in France, let's say a person like like Le Pen comes into power or whatever it is. That things like that could create a world war because now they're looking for sovereignty away from a war world system. I'm not saying that these are great people that they are saving our asses because they have their own agenda as well. But at the end of the day, they want a sovereign nation. Now, when you have that, that could create a situation where they see that China is playing the game of trying to take away sovereignty or being used as the pawn to take away sovereignty. And China then not only becomes the pawn, but it becomes the enforcer. That's the thing, right? America was used as the enforcer in the last 40 to 50, wait, the last 70 to 80 years, America was where China was. Mm-hmm. All right, this, this, this is a better way to look at it. America, after World War I, around that time period in the early 1900s, America was what China is now. Mm-hmm. And America back then, like the, uh, like the America of that time period, was 
Great Britain was the United, you know, the United Kingdom. Yep. The British Empire was America. And the British Empire was the one that did anything they wanted in the world. They were the great power. They were the, you know, the that, that was the leader of the world. America wasn't really much back then. It was it was growing. It was dealing still. It was, you know, they were still figuring itself out. In the late 1800s, you know, the industrial age just started to, you know, but America was China was coming up the same way China is now. Now, back then, lost power, right? Because of World War, World War One was disastrous. England, you know, went almost bankrupt, and America became the world leader. And then World War Two happened, and America was really the leader. And then China now is exactly that. China right now is what America was back then. China is stepping up to become world leader. America is indebted to their ass, just like Great Britain was back then when the empire fell, when they had to get rid of India and create, you know, uh, you know, Pakistan and India. And they had to get rid of some of their islands in the Caribbean and in the Pacific and all of that. And they broke up Palestine. America's close to that right there, that period. Mm -hmm. America right now is close to that, that they're almost tapping out. And what happened when Brent, Brent, Great Britain tapped out, America came in and led the world and was the pawn of the world doing everything. Anything that needed to be done in the world, America was there as a policeman. But remember, Amer America always did what others wanted it to. What did what did what did um, Dwight D. Eisenhower say before he left office in his exit speech? He said that the 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 greatest threat to American democracy was the military industrial complex. Mm. They make the freaking rules, right? It was all this war machine. Right. Right, they made the freaking rules. He said that same thing with JFK. Was, you know, he was worried. Mm -hmm. The president they didn't make the rules. He tried to, and look what happened to him. Look at freaking look at his brother. His brother wanted to become president. RFK wanted to become president, and he got killed when he was in the primaries. Mm -hmm. They didn't want another JFK trying to make the rules because he knew what the hell was going on. He got killed. They work. It's it, the system of the country of America is manipulated by some force that we don't know of. Now that force is looking at China as the power. So you know, it's like it needs something with energy. America's it's too weak. We're weak. We've got spread too thin. So China is now going to be that, and America will have to sit back the way England did, because what. England is just, it's not a world power. Mm -hmm. Look at England. They don't tell the world what to do. They can't. They don't have that. America's the one that does everything. They lead everything. But not no more. Once China comes in, once they're allowed to, China, and that's good, it's going to be weird for us because we never experienced mm -hmm. a, a, a difference of a country like China leading the world. A different culture? We're not used to that. But that shit's been going on for, for hundreds and hundreds of years all the time. Right, right. Yeah, so like right now, it's pretty much we're seeing like the last squeeze almost out of the American economy before that happens, right? Like how much, how what what bit of every last dollar can we squeeze out of this system and and steal from people before the ultimate bottom? And then the yeah, well, China already started to ask for their money back. Mm -hmm. They're starting to they're starting to collect on their loans to the United States. Start, you know, start paying. They're extracting every little thing that they can to weaken so that if anybody in the government of the United States or any president comes up with a bright idea of putting a stop to that great leap forward or that great reset, America does not have the power to do anything about it because there be, will be capitulated. Mm -hmm. And if we have a civil war, in America, even even faster, 
even faster. That'll be the fastest way to get to it. Well, that, that's that's what happened with Russia. This Think is what yeah, the Soviet this, Union did not collapse if it wasn't for a civil war. Yeah, so that's something that we should talk about real quick because maybe that's an alternative outcome to what I was just bringing up with the South China Sea and us kind of hugging around China. It's the fact that it ends it or at least civil war comes to the United States like like has been like has been alluded to through the Boogaloo movement and a lot of what you've been in uh, again that the episode of the Kaiser report with Roy Sabag, he brought up to the point that you know if you look at a lot of the mass shootings that have taken place in this country over the last couple of years, you would already see that uh, there's sides being taken now and and it's coming and and uh, you know so maybe that's the outcome is that we see more of a civil war here. Yeah, I think, you know, there could be. And there's going to be conflict in the world. There, There is, you know, I think that we have a lot of those, we have a lot of the Navy out there in the Pacific and all that. And I think it's not only for China. I think it's to keep everybody in line because Japan isn't happy that China is the leader. Mm. Japan doesn't like China. Right. Japan is worried about a China. But they can't do shit because they're in the worst economic situation than many of the leading economies in the world. South Korea is not happy with that. They don't want that, but they have to deal with it. The United, the United States is there to make sure that everybody is in line mm. up until the passing or whatever it is. Mm. Whatever it is. United States just is in that position. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like we're there to to intimidate China. In the in the in the meantime, but once once um, you know Biden comes into power and everything, is that's more as a, that's just a show. Right. It's a show for the world to think something that is not. I think it's important to talk about this stuff too because you know if you were watching mainstream TV. Uh, you're not you're not getting any of this geopolitical conversation. You know, it's not being talked about at all in U.S. news outlets at all. And it, like it's like you've got like one of the biggest builds up buildups of troops since World War Two. And, you know, you've got a large deployment of of, uh, you know, bases and soldiers in the Asia Pacific region. And you've got those water routes, right, with the shipping, all those shipping routes, which have been disputed now for like two years. But you don't hear any of it on the news. You don't hear any of it on the news. It's not talked about. You know, it's not a part of it's not a part of the American dream. Right. And that's one of the issues I feel like a lot of people face is they just there's they don't know where to get their information. They, here's the thing. They don't know where to get their information because there's distrust. But I think that. The first thing where they got wrong is by putting their faith in seeking for other people to tell them the information versus going and figuring it out themselves and then trying to, you know. It's hard, bro. It's hard to know what the hell's going on because you can look up as much as you want. We don't know what's going on between China and Taiwan right now. It's a lot of word that, you know, Taiwan might be sucked back in to China. It might happen. They, Hong Kong got taken over completely. Hong Kong was always China's. Mm -hmm. On all honesty, it was. But they totally just they you know there was a treaty that was uh, done and all of that, and that got ratified, and nothing went, nothing was done. China was able to do so. So, what power does the world have to stop any of that? It's none. Mm -hmm. It's all talk. You know, I just think that it's. I just think that, you know, it's there's so much going on. It's hard to ever tell what's the truth and what's not. We don't know what's true. You know, right now we're talking and, you know, we're talking and and some of it might be true. Some of it might not be true. Some of it might be speculation. And you go you go searching around and everybody has these little bits and pieces. But still, on top of that, it might all be false. We don't know what the hell's going on mm. because that's the thing, right? We don't know what happens until it happens. And even when it does happen, it takes forever to actually learn what happened. Mm. Nobody even know who, who killed JFK till this day. 
We don't have 100% facts. There's some people that do know that were part of that whole scam. To this day, we don't have the whole story. To this day, we don't really understand why Nixon and uh, Kissinger went to China and shook, shook hands with them and did what they did and brought them in. To this day, we don't know why they took us off the gold standard. To this day, we don't know who the shareholders are to the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. system. There's a lot of things that we just don't know, which is which is the way they want it. There are powers that be, man. There's not you cannot tell me that there's not a pyramid system in this world and that there's people that are pulling the strings from the top. Mm. You just can't. Well, we do know that there are cycles and there is observable and documented history and a lot of that can be used in like your own speculation on just where the world's going to go. It's probably the only thing that we do have is history, right? Like you can't, yeah. like if you're going to, and, and then I know even some of that is distorted based on kind of what, when it was written, but like, it's like, if you can't believe anything that you're watching in front of you now, just look back in history and then you can formulate your own opinions based on where like you think it's going to go from there. Um, but it's the truth, man. Oh, so, yeah, man. so that's it. So it's we're going to have to see what happens with this stimulus bill. I think going forward then, like, we'll definitely continue to report on that because it. I'd, I'd be curious if it's going to pass or not, number one. And then number two, seeing what happens with the digital dollar, the whole talk of it in the last couple of bills, and then seeing what happens with the whole privacy laws for the Internet. Because I, I even saw uh, uh, Barack Obama came out like two or three weeks ago and publicly pretty much said that the internet needed to be regulated and they need to do it to keep people safe and to get civil order back. So it's, I saw Joe Rogan had, um, the guy from signal on and they were talking about a bunch of stuff. Okay. And it, yeah, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to encrypt, you know, the whole thing with encryption. I don't know, man, that there's a whole conversation to have about that. Mm. It could become a, a. It could become that you know the system becomes regulated in a way that social media companies and Google are the ones that are the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. and that they are allowed to be the gatekeepers, and that's what it is. And we won't have encryption. That'll be bye bye, like the the dodo bird. So you know, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, man. And this is all going back to what you just saying, the Great Reset. There, there's gonna be a reset, man. This is where you know it's always. We just don't know what the hell's going on right now. We don't know what's going on with the stimulus bill. So, and unfortunately, who gets screwed over with all of this? Mm. We do. Yeah, we get screwed over. So yeah, cool, man. All right, guys. I'm sorry about the doom and gloom, but this is just real talk. <laughs> Buckle up. Yo, chaos yep. though, chaos. There's a lot of opportunity in chaos, right? What's that saying? There is. Don't ever let there a is. don't ever let a good emergency go to waste or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? don't don't let yeah, don't let yeah, disaster go to waste. Don't let don't ever let a good disaster go to waste. You want chaos. You want and Kaiser Max Kaiser the other day was saying like he thinks there's not enough chaos right now. He was like he was talking about he's like, you know what it was like in the sixties and seventies? with all the violence and stuff. And then on top of it, you could have been That's shipped true. over to Vietnam. He's like, you could have been drafted. 1968, 1968 is one of the worst years in history. Yeah. In our modern history, 1968, we had the assassination of RFK. We had the assassination of MLK. Oh. We had the, one of the largest amounts of um, casualties in Vietnam War. We had one of the biggest uh, amounts of protests and riots in the United States because of the murders of MLK mm -hmm. and all of, and then the war protest. 1968 was bad. Was so, bad. So it's always been here. It's just a different flavor of the week, right? On the bright side. Yes. So, yes. But 2020 is, yeah, is up there. So let's just try to make it to, and they're saying 2021 could be even worse than 2020. So, you know, don't think that just because we're going into the next year, mm -hmm. it's going to be all, you know, sunshines and rainbows. You know, it, this might be, you might have, this might be a marathon. So don't fucking, you know, don't get your hopes up. 
2025. 2025. End of yep. the, end That's of the me. I'm turning. saying 2025. Mm. 2025 is my, like, this is the year that things might get back to a, nor- a, a normal. Yeah. A normal. Yeah. Not the normal that we're used to, but a normal. Mm-hmm. A normal. So. Yeah. All right, y'all. Guys. If you like it, share it. Subscribe. Peace.